Hey guys, welcome to the video. So you hear all the time about how developers have to be aware of this technology or that technology. In terms of languages, you hear a lot of talk about languages and being aware of the possibilities. I agree with this to a certain extent. As I've said many times, all the major programming languages these days are very capable. So you should just have a concentration of one or two languages, I don't know, JavaScript or Python or something, and know it well, and then just be aware of the opportunities or options or the capabilities of other languages that are out there so that you can make intelligent decisions in terms of your software development. So for example, you want to know when it makes sense to use Java where it might make sense to use C-sharp, or where it might make sense to use PHP, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you don't have to know all these languages, because as you know one language, you pretty much know a lot about the other ones, but just be aware when they might make sense. So when you run across a project, you may go, you know what? For this particular project, it might make sense to use Python, or might, or might make sense to use PHP. As I've also, as I always say too, but you also have to pay attention to the job market. You may think that technically a particular language or framework will be best for a, a particular job, but you may see that the business environment around uh, that job uh, will push that out. So for example, you go work for a company or you get a freelance job at a company and their whole infrastructure is in Ruby. Now, you know, because you watch this channel, I know you got to get rid of that, but the fact of the matter is they won't want to. They won't want to get rid of it because they've already invested so much in their Ruby stacks. So you're just going to have to work with that language. I'm just joking, by the way, you know, for all the Ruby people out there, I think Ruby is actually a pretty cool language. It runs a little slow for my taste, but uh, it's a very good language. It's got really neat syntax in many regards. Anyhow. So, yeah, you got to be aware of different languages are out there so you can decide when and not to apply them. You have to also be aware of the business uh, implications. Can you implement that language given where you want to do it, given the market? You may love Dart, but if there's no jobs in Dart or Go or whatever, I'm just throwing out names, then, you know, too bad, you gotta go where the money is. That all said and done, one thing, and the whole point of this video actually, is to discuss uh, supporting tech. So what do I mean by supporting tech? And I don't even know if that's a great term. I'm basically talking about tools and frameworks that are out there that will speed up, minimize, or eliminate the need to write code for certain aspects of your project. So. You may see libraries that do that. You may see uh, uh, IDEs that produce IDEs, integrated development environments, uh, coding tools that may be able to generate things for you. Code generators, by the way, traditionally have been mm, of limited use because the code that the code generating applications create oftentimes is inflexible. So let me back up a code gen generating application is simply just a program, an application, an app, a piece of software that you buy that allows you a lot of times, well, since we're talking on web here, but it applies to any area really, you drag and drop components and it writes the code for you. So you don't have to get in there and write all that code. It saves you a lot of time. I used to use these a lot to create prototypes uh, or just uh, create the boilerplate code if the, if the code that it wrote was good. Uh, very useful tools. But another thing you have to consider is just turnkey solutions like a Shopify or a Wix or a Squarespace, a WordPress, a content management system like a WordPress or Drupal. Again, antithetical to what a lot of developers would want to do. It makes you cringe. You say, I should code this. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> Top three rules of software development is reuse, 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 right? You don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's plenty of code to write. So don't worry about trying to uh, protect yourself by not using a web template, not using a CMS. So you're not protecting yourself. You're just creating extra work for nothing. Your goal 
as the developers to get the project up and running as quickly as possible. And as the market matures, as the technology space matures, you're going to see more and more turnkey solutions that you should apply as a developer. A developer is not just a coder. A developer is somebody who just gets a project up and running. So a developer is open to using whatever technology is is possible. So for example, I'm about to launch this mentoring program that people have been asking me to do for years. You can go back, I've been talking about YouTube for years, and I just hadn't had the time. So I decided with more and more prompting to put out a developer, uh, excuse me, a mentoring program. Fine. So the mentoring, I'm not going to sell it here, but point is I decided I'm going to see how it is quick. This is good business. I don't know how many people are actually going to respond to it. So I didn't want to invest a bunch of time in developing a really nice looking website and uh, putting in uh, multiple e-commerce options, etc. So what I did, I bought a template for 18 bucks that pretty much suits what I wanted. I had to write a, make a bunch of changes to it. So I bought the template because my lead designer is this busy reskinning Studio Web. I didn't want to pull them off of that because that's much more important. So I threw this up made some changes to it bing bang boom bob's your uncle i got myself a basic looking website it looks pretty good and you know i wasn't spending too much time on the design but the code was all in place and i slap in my text make some some tweaks and some adjustments and that's it it's a tool you know i i wanted to get the site up as quickly as possible they call that MVP, minimum viable product, just to get it out there, see if people are interested. If there's a good interest, eh, I will will put more money or time into uh, improving the design and the functionality of the layout. But uh, yeah, I use a template. I could have did it all myself from scratch, but why spend an extra two hours laying out a page from scratch when I could just buy a template for 18 bucks, right? My time is worth much more. Two hours of my time is worth much more than $18. Anyway, I think I'm going to expand upon this and start looking at other tools amongst the other th subjects I'm going to cover on this YouTube. But uh, yeah, you just keep an open mind. The bottom line of this video is to keep an open mind. Don't be intimidated or worried about builders and templates and uh, services because uh, these are all just tools in your tool belt. Anyway, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.